My wife, Kate, and I have both been looking forward to our vacation for quite some time. Nearly every year since we had tied the knot, we've made it a point to set aside some time specifically for us, to help us both reconnect and to get away from the multitude of stress that seems to endlessly build over the months. Each year, we try to pick some place new, some place that isn't your typical getaway. Our very first vacation took us to Mount Rushmore, and while it was a stunning piece of American history, all the tourists that congregated there made the trip less than enjoyable. Since then, we both decided that we'd visit places that weren't so heavily traversed. The following year, we journeyed to a small resort just outside a very populated city, and we probably had the best time in a while. Might seem contradictory to my previous statement, but we never went into the city itself. We spent most our time relaxing by the pool of our resort, or journeying around the lesser known attractions outside of the city. Since it wasn't your average vacation season, there were hardly any people at the resort, and there were even less farther away from town. We dined at some of the local restaurants in the area, and experienced many little gems that you probably wouldn't find in the inner city. After our trip, Kate and I both left feeling refreshed. It was then that we realized we made a good decision on taking these trips. That was until a month ago. Kate had messaged me while I was at work and asked if I had thought about what I wanted to do for our upcoming trip. I told her I had no immediate ideas, but if she had something to let me know. A few moments later... She sent me a link, and after reading it over for a bit, I was interested. The link directed to a bed and breakfast in a state we hadn't been to before. The photos on the website were quite charming. It had a very rustic exterior, almost like a cabin of sorts. It seemed like the B&B was somewhat out in the boonies, almost like a nature retreat. The house itself was a bit on the smaller side, and upon reading the description... I realized that it was a guest house owned by this family. Due to its small size, the family decided it was best to just rent the entire house out than simply just a room. The description mentioned renting it out to hunters or to families that like to camp without the, well, camping. The pricing actually wasn't too bad either, all things considered. To be honest, I was more surprised that Kate suggested this place as she never struck me as the outdoorsy type. I asked her if this was the place she wanted to go to and she confirmed right away. Around an hour later, I booked the dates for the trip and we were all set to go on yet another relaxing getaway. The day had arrived and after dealing with the nightmare that is the airport, we finally made it to our destination. After grabbing our bags, we rented a car and began our long drive through the snow-covered roads. As we traveled farther and farther away from the bulk of the city, trees began to fill the majority of the scenery around us. Nearly two and a half hours of driving later, the GPS on my phone dropped out, and I sighed. Luckily, we came prepared as I had printed out some directions beforehand. I asked Kate to dig them out of my bag and she obliged. After glancing at the directions, I realized it wasn't too much farther away. I kept a close eye for the mile markers indicating a turnoff, and a few moments later, I spotted a break in the tree line. I turned onto the uneven road, made more so by the fresh snow. I began to question if our car could even make it through this terrain, but thankfully the four-wheel drive came through. I parked the car in front of the house, and we both leaned forward to look out of the windshield. For the most part, the house seemed fine. I turned to Kate with a smile, and after nodding to one another, we got out of the car and grabbed our bags, before walking up to the house itself. The crunch of the snow beneath our feet seemed to echo around us as we approached. I couldn't help but notice that the house itself looked a little off from the photos I had seen online. Overall, it was identical, but just some of the colors seemed... strange. The front door, which on the photo was a reddish color, was now a pale white. The exterior panels that were previously a dark brown were much more faded in places now. I just assumed that the photos I had seen online were from possibly years ago, and they just never updated them. I shrugged as we walked up to the front door. 
When I spoke with a woman through email, she told me that she would leave the house unlocked and that the key would be inside. So I reached out and turned the knob. With a low creak, the door opened inward. Kate and I both entered the house. We took a moment to take in our new surroundings. The living room which we had entered into was extremely plain. An area rug with a single couch in the center of the room. Two end tables sat on either side of it. We walked into the kitchen which seemed just as vacant. A singular table with only two chairs sat in the corner. A refrigerator and a sink sat on the other side. We ventured back into the living room and up the stairs. There were two bedrooms upstairs as well as a very cramped bathroom in between. The house wasn't awful. It was quite clean. It just wasn't anything special. Sort of disappointing. We set our bags down in one of the bedrooms and Kate gave me a look of understanding and apologized for the suggestion. I told her there was no need to apologize that this place was great and we probably wouldn't even spend a whole lot of time here anyways. She nodded and we spent the remainder of the day, which was only a couple hours now, looking around the house. During this time, I tried to find the key to the house that the owner had left for us, but after looking on and under every table, I couldn't find it. I made a note to contact her in the morning about it and locked the front door from the inside. Night eventually fell and we were both getting ready to go to sleep. Laying down in a strange house sure was an off-putting experience. I can't explain why, it just felt odd for some reason. Eventually sleep took us and for a couple hours it was peaceful. Then, at around 1am, I was stirred from my sleep by Kate gently shaking me. She told me that she thought she heard someone knocking on the front door. I sat up groggily and tried to clear the fog from my head. A moment later, what she had said finally sank in. I asked her if she was sure she had heard someone knocking, and despite the darkness, I could tell she was nodding at me. I leaned over the side of the bed and slipped on my shoes. I hoisted my exhausted body up and walked out of the bedroom. As I walked down the wooden staircase, each step was followed by a painful groan of the wood below. When I reached the base of the stairs, I glanced around and didn't see anything out of place. I walked over to the door thinking that maybe one of the owners had to stop by for some reason, though this late at night sure was odd. With a yawn, I unlocked and opened the door. The icy wind struck my face and that helped to wake me up a bit. I squinted my eyes and looked around. There didn't seem to be anyone outside at all. I shrugged before shutting and locking the door once again. I was halfway up the stairs when a knock echoed from behind me. My feet seemed to fuse with the wooden staircase. By this point, Kate was now standing at the top of the stairs looking down at me. I held up a finger to my lips at her before turning around. Instead of going right back to the door, I walked over to one of the adjacent windows and peeled the curtain back. There was definitely someone standing outside the door this time. Through the snow, it was difficult to see who exactly was standing there. At first glance, it seemed like an average person, though I couldn't see more than just their shape. Another knock sounded as I watched this person standing out in the cold lift their arm. I took an extremely deep breath, puffed out my chest, and decided to answer the door a second time. Kate gave me a nervous look and I just reassured her with a half smile. I gripped the knob, unlocked the door, and pulled it open. The wind again gusted inward, and I instinctively squinted my eyes a second time. I spoke aloud and said, Hello? And once my vision cleared a bit, I noticed that there was nobody there. A feeling of unease began to creep in the back of my mind. I looked around outside, and after not seeing anybody, I shut the door, double-checking it was locked. After turning to Kate, she asked me what was wrong and I told her that I thought I saw someone standing outside through the window. A minute went by. Then two. Then ten. Kate and I both stood there in silence. No more knocks occurred. Kate said that they probably left and I agreed. She headed back up to bed and I was just about to follow. 
when I glanced back over to the window. Curiously, I walked back over to it, just to take one more peek outside. I peeled the curtain back once more. When I did, I saw that I was now face to face with something on the other side of the glass. Its head was long and thin. It had very high cheekbones that seemed to jut out of the sides of its face. It was bald, and its skin seemed to be discolored. Narrow lips seemed to be pressed into a stern expression. Its cheeks were gaunt, as if it hadn't eaten in days. The reason I call it a it and not a he was because of its eyes. Eyes which were so far sunken into their sockets that it almost resembled a skull. Eyes which were so black and lifeless that they couldn't possibly belong to a human. They locked with mine and I could feel my bones seize up and my blood run cold. It snapped its head to the left with an unnatural tilt like an insect. When it did this, I screamed and fell backwards. I scrambled to my feet and dashed up the stairs. Kate asked me what was wrong in a panic while I hurriedly locked the bedroom door behind me. I told her about what I saw and she didn't say anything. If it were any other situation, she probably would have called me out for joking. But after seeing the look in my eyes, she knew I wasn't. We both packed up our bags, got dressed, and waited until sunrise. A few short hours later, the sun crested on the horizon and started to fill the windows of the house with light. We grabbed our things, and after checking all the windows, I cautiously opened the door. Upon seeing that the coast was clear, Kate and I dashed to our car. We loaded our things up, and after spinning the tires in the snow for a few seconds, we drove out of there. As we rounded the bend, I couldn't be certain, but through the rearview mirror, it looked like someone was walking towards the house as we were leaving. We decided then to just cut our vacation short. We drove back to the airport and immediately bought a new ticket home. We arrived back to our house only a few short hours later. Kate and I both tried to just forget about that trip entirely. But that was until I received an email a day later from the woman who owned the bed and breakfast. She asked me if we were still planning on showing up. I told her that we did and stayed the night there, but we had to leave for personal reasons. She then asked me a strange question. She asked us how we managed to get inside. Confused, I inquired as to what she meant. She told me she had forgotten to unlock the door and leave the key inside. She said she drove out the day we were meant to arrive to drop off the key and waited to greet us until dark, but we never showed up. I then asked her if she could send us an updated picture of the house, and upon seeing the reddish color and dark brown exterior panels, I realized that we had spent the night in the wrong house. I don't know who or what that thing was I saw through the window that night, but I think Kate and I are going to avoid staying at any bed and breakfasts at least for a while.